Hi everybody. In this video, we will learn how to create a bridge chart. Bridge charts, often called waterfall charts, are very popular graphic tools that are often used in corporate presentations. A bridge normally shows how an initial value is affected by a series of intermediate positive or negative values. Bridge charts are not native to Microsoft Excel, which slightly complicates their creation. Sometimes large firms have their own add-ins allowing the creation of bridge charts, but you can always benefit from being able to build this chart from scratch. The method which we will see in this video is probably the simplest for the creation of bridge charts. In the sheet bridge chart, we have a ready-made bridge chart which will be the final output of our exercise. Let's take a look at it. The chart shows us the 2012 EBITDA and then through intermediate steps, change in revenues, change in variable costs, and change in OPEX, it explains to us what influenced the different value for EBITDA in 2013. Revenues were higher by 0.3 million in 2013. Variable costs were higher in 2013 as well, which has a negative impact on EBITDA. Operating expenses were lower, though, as we can see a positive effect of plus 1.0 million going from 2012 to 2013. And we arrive to the 2013 value for EBITDA, 5.3 million. Now that we've seen what it is and how it functions, let's build our bridge chart from scratch. First of all, we need our starting value, the intermediate values which drive the change, and the final value. In our case, these will be the same as the chart which is ready. EBITDA for FY12, change in revenues, change in variable costs, change in OPEX, and EBITDA for FY13. EBITDA for FY12 is something that we have. We can just go to the P&L sheet and link them. Okay, the change for each of the immediate steps is something that we need to calculate. For each of the steps, we have to go to the P&L sheet and take the difference between the value for 2013 and the value for 2012. Please note that the operation is done in the same way for revenues and costs. I'll go and take the difference for each of the intermediate steps. After we have carried out this operation for the three intermediate steps, the data source for our bridge chart is ready. I'll link to the value of EBITDA for 2013 in order to facilitate the check. It is always good to make a check to see whether the sum of the value which we have after considering the initial value and all the intermediate steps is the same as the final value. Our check shows that the numbers are okay and we can go ahead. Let's copy and use Paste Special, clicking Transpose, in order to obtain the names of the components of our chart in the following way. EBITDA FY12, change in revenues, change in variable costs, change in OPEX, and EBITDA FY13. Okay, we have the names of the components on a single row. We need to start from EBITDA for FY12. I'll select its value and link it to the data source above. Now imagine that the basis for our chart is a stacked column chart. If we look carefully to the right where we have the ready bridge chart, we can notice that it actually is a stacked column chart with some transparent components. We need to create the stacked column chart in a way that would allow us to transform it into a bridge afterwards. So, will there be anything above the value of EBITDA for FY12? No. We can see that in the ready chart on the right. So let's write 0 below 4.2. Next we have change in revenues. Let's link the value for EBITDA for FY12 in the first cell. In the cell below, we'll answer the question, how did the change in revenues influence EBITDA for FY13? it had a positive effect of plus 0.3. So we'll link to such change and thus show that the overall quantity increased to 4.5. See how it is in the ready bridge chart? Think of these plus 0.3 million as a step which increments the initial value of 4.2 million. 
things become a little trickier when the change is negative. So far, calculating roughly, we started from 4.2 and added 0.3, which took us to 4.5. Now we will have a negative impact of 0.2. The value needs to decrease, and therefore we need to show how these 0.2 reduced our current amount of 4.5 we will have one part of the column which shows what the result is after the decrease and one part which represents the actual decrease. The column has two components, the amount of negative change and the amount which remains after the negative change. We need to have these two components in the cells here. In the first cell, we will have the amount which remains after the negative change. It is given by the sum of the amount at which we had arrived before the negative change in this step. In the cell below, I'll take the negative change and reverse its sign. These two values would allow us to have what we see in the bridge chart on the right. The transparent value is where we've arrived, while the negative change is over here. The next component change in OPEX is positive, so we can do the same thing we did for change in revenues. We'll take the value at which we arrived in our previous step. In the cell below, we'll have the positive component of change in OPEX plus 1.0 million. For our ending point, we'll have only the value at which we arrived in our last step. That would be 4.3 million plus 1 million. Okay. Now let's select all the numbers and create a column stacked chart. The first thing that we will do in order to turn this into a bridge chart is to select the first series of components in the middle and remove the fill of the data points. This is done in the following way. Select the data point and choose No Fill. Be careful to pick only single columns and not the entire series. Now let's change the colors of positive and negative changes. Generally speaking, it is a good practice to have all of the positive changes with the same color and all of the negative changes with another color. Here I'll pick green for the positive changes and bright red for the negative. I'll spend another second in order to color our two endpoints in dark blue. The default labels are in black, but probably the better option is to have them in white and in bold. Now let's do all of our familiar formatting which we saw in the examples before. Let's remove the fill and the border color of the chart. Let's select it and, through a right-click, change its font to Arial 8. This is better, right? Another thing is that I don't need these labels, Series 1 and Series 2. Let's erase them. Let's give a half-page format to our chart by modifying its dimensions in a way that it becomes similar to the example chart. I'll need to reduce the height and enlarge its width. Let's take care of the grid lines. Remember how it's done? We need to pick one of them. Right click on it. Select Format Grid Lines. After which we choose a gray line color and adjust its transparency to 75%. We are missing some titles for our bridge chart. Let's add them. A right click on the chart, select Data, and I'll be able to pick the horizontal axis titles of my choosing. Let's add a title to our access in order to clarify the currency and the amounts that we are using. We have to go to Chart Tools, select Axis Titles, and pick a title option for our vertical axis. OK. Let's type the unit of measurement within it. We have Euro in Million. Perfect. The final thing we are missing is the chart title. Let's go again to the Chart Tools menu. There we can select a chart title which will be above our bridge chart. Let's use the same title as the one of the chart which is ready. EBITDA Bridge FY12 to FY13. 
I'll apply the same formatting for titles that we saw for the other charts in this case study. Font Arial, Font Size 9, the text color is dark blue, and the position of the title is on the left side of the chart. This is how a bridge chart is created and formatted.